Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeremy Barrett. I'm the campaign's national field director. Thank you so much for joining our call tonight. We will uh, be joined uh, by our special guest in a minute or two. But before we are, I wanted to give you a quick update from headquarters here in Chicago. As you know, we've got just 20 days to go until Election Day. And we are, uh, we're feeling pretty good here in Chicago. We're feeling pretty good for a couple of reasons. The first is that, as you know, and uh, many of you watched, I'm sure, uh, President Obama clearly won last night's debate. It reminded all of us of why, we're, why we need to keep fighting so hard. What we saw last night in our president was a strong, steady, and decisive leader with an affirmative vision to move this country forward. We heard a specific, concrete plan to grow the economy from the middle out, not from the top down, creating a million new manufacturing jobs, doubling our exports, recruiting 100,000 science and math teachers, cutting our oral imports in half, and reducing the deficit in a balanced, smart way that protects the middle class. What you also saw was the president holding Mitt Romney accountable. And we saw that when Romney was exposed on the emptiness of his own plans, he was rattled, lashed out against the moderator, and refused to explain his indef indefensible ideas. He misled voters yet again. He didn't tell the truth about his plan to take away women's access to affordable contraception, or on the president's response to the terror attack in Libya or about his own promise to veto the DREAM Act. He misfired on attacks and fired blanks on his own proposals. As President Obama pointed out, Romney's five-point plan is really a one-point plan. One set of rules for himself and his friends and another set of rules for all the rest of us. The same bad ideas that created this crisis in the first place. He also pointed out that Mitt Romney is offering the American people a sketchy deal. A plan to spend $5 trillion on a tax cut for the wealthiest that don't need it and aren't asking for it, and a $2 trillion plan uh, for defense buildup the Pentagon doesn't want without explaining how he paid for it. And as the President talked about women as breadwinners for American families, Mitt Romney talked about them as resumes in a binder. I still have no idea what he was trying to say, but it sure did sound like he knows what life, he sure did not sound like he knows what life is like for everyday Americans. So last night's debate was a resounding victory for the president, and it was because of the strength of his ideas and his values. And the second reason we're, we're feeling good here is the strength of our get out the vote effort, which is in full force all across the country. Because as many of you know, election day isn't just November 6th. In many states, it's already started. In fact, this coming weekend, we have 16,624 grassroots events planned and more growing every day, most of them local door-to-door -door canvases. And this weekend we have a 143% increase in volunteers getting out there and going door-to-door -door over last weekend. As you all know, Obama for America revolutionized political campaigning in 2007 and 2008 by building an unprecedented national grassroots movement based on neighbor-to-neighbor team-based organizing. And we've never stopped growing it. Over the past five years, we've continued to build relationships and plant deep roots in communities across this country. This has allowed us to keep up conversations we began last cycle with our supporters and undecided voters in their communities. These early investments are paying off today in measurable ways on the things that matter, like voter registration and early margins on both counts are bigger now than they were in 2008. It's significant that in states where Republicans led in vote by mail, where they had historically outpaced Democrats, their lead is considerably smaller than it was in 2008. Now, today, Democrats typically outpace Republicans with in-person early vote, which has started in Ohio, Iowa, New Mexico, and will start in North Carolina tomorrow, and Nevada on Saturday, and more and more states in the coming days. Because this is a data-driven campaign, let me give you a couple of telling examples of our voter registration efforts and the, their effectiveness. Today, Democrats' party registration leads Republicans in nearly every single battleground state. We outregistered Republicans in every battleground state, every battleground state for the past three months. 
Latino registration has greatly exceeded registration among non-Latino whites, and Latino registration preferences have increasingly favored Democrats since 2008. Most new registrants are under the age of 30. In fact, more than four in five new registrants are women, young people, and minority voters. And this is where we stand today on the other metrics that matter in terms of early voting. And I'll just give you a few examples. In Iowa, we lead in vote by mail of cast, in-person early voting, total voting, and total ballots requests. We also lead by a wider margin than we did at this point in 2008 in both ballots requested and votes cast. In Ohio, we lead in ballots requested and ballots cast and are ahead of where we were at this time against John McCain. Down in Florida, at this point in 2008, Republicans outnumbered Democrats among absentee mail voters by almost 250,000 voters. This year, Democrats have cut that margin to just under 50,000, a huge improvement over 2008. In Nevada, at this point in 2008, Republicans outnumbered Democrats in absentee ballot requests by more than 8,000. This year, Democrats are in the lead. The same goes for North Carolina and other states across the country. In the past two months, thousands of supporters have opened their homes for convention and debate watching parties. For the last several months, we've had massive turnout during weekends of action, registering tens of thousands of new supporters. Jeremy, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Jeremy, this is Bobby. Hey, Bobby, how are you? How are you, sir? Hey, Jeremy. Mr. President, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. We're on the phone with thousands of your supporters from all across the country. Well, listen, the main reason I'm calling is to say thanks for every, uh, thanks to everybody for just the unbelievable, you know, efforts and sacrifice you guys have made in this campaign. Uh, you know, everybody on the line, you guys are the bedrock of this campaign. Through thick and thin, you guys have been there. And a lot of you have been there now for five, six years. So I, I, I just want to let you know how I, I couldn't be more thankful for your efforts. Um, you know, obviously, we had a, a second debate last night, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to get the hang of this thing. Uh, we, the main purpose of this debate was, and, and the debate that we're going to have on Monday, is to make sure that we're driving home to the American people what's at stake. You know, you saw Governor Romney talking about a five-point plan that really is just a one-point plan. You know, making sure that folks at the very top are playing by a different set of rules. Wanting to roll back Wall Street reform, wanting to roll back health care reform to make sure that insurance companies aren't taking advantage of, of consumers. Uh, rolling back our, uh, you know, our efforts to make sure that students are getting a, a fair deal when it comes to interest rates. All those things uh, are at stake in this election. And essentially what we saw, once again, was Governor Romney uh, wanting to take us back to the same top-down philosophy that got us into this mess. And, and one thing I've, I really feel in my gut, and I hope you guys heard it yesterday, was we can't afford to go back down that road, Not especially after all the hard work uh, of the American people to, to get out of this mess. Uh, you know, and what I tried to do was offer an alternative vision, one that says we grow from the middle class out and that we got to invest in education and manufacturing and basic research and we're going to reduce our deficit in a balanced way that allows us to make those investments, and we're going to end a war in Afghanistan uh, on a, uh, a timetable that allows us to invest in doing some nation building here at home. And we've got a lot more work to do, but I'm confident we can get it done. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to fight every inch to make sure it happens. Uh, you know, we've got to make sure that in these last 19 days, we are doing everything we can to win in the battleground states and win this election. And that's what I'm going to need from you guys. You know, look, my, my opponent's campaign admits that they can't lay out exactly what they're going to do because the American people aren't going to buy it. They know this tax plan doesn't add up. They understand that when Mitt Romney says he wants to provide 12 million jobs, nobody has any idea where they would come from or what exactly his plans are. Uh, at this stage of the game, he's trying to um, educate 
sets itself into an, uh, a moderate after having ran as a severely conservative ideal Tea Party candidate. And, and that's where he's going to keep on trying to hammer home. Uh, but those of us who've been following his statements with respect to women's health care issues, those of us who've been following his statements with respect to education, those of us who think about the prospects of uh, a Supreme Court uh, that you know, it is weighing on the side of uh, politicians in Washington who want to take uh, women's health care choices away from them, those of us who are concerned about uh, you know, the, the future of how we deal with uh, a volatile world that doesn't rush us back into war, you know, those of us who care about middle class families getting an even shot, uh, we understand what's at stake. And so, you know, the bottom line is, under, in these last 19 days, uh, we can anticipate the other side are going to spend more money than we've even seen up until now on negative ads and false attacks and super packs or uh, just going haywire all, all across uh, the country. You will see an avalanche of these ads over the next 20 days. Um, the good news is we've got you. We've got the strongest round game that we've been building since I first started running in 2007. Uh, that's built on the principle of neighbors talking to neighbors and friends talking to friends. But we're also going to have to make sure that we're not getting out spent 5 to 1 or 10 to 1 uh, in these battleground states in the last couple of weeks. So uh, I know everybody has, you know, given to it hurts, but, you know, I, I used to tell the uh, folks who supported me in my very first race about uh, a friend of mine, Abner Mitchell, who, uh, who ran for Congress several times, finally won, had a distinguished career, ended up being White House counsel. He said that being friends with a politician is like uh, perpetually having a kid in college. Well, the good news is in 19 days I graduate, and, uh, uh, you know, this will be my last election, but it, it's the one that counts more than anything else. So tonight is the very last FEC reporting deadline of this election. From here on out, we're on a full sprint to the finish line, and we're going to have to have our reasons resources ready so we can execute our get-out-the-vote strategy, respond when the Republican fit us. Uh, and it, it's simple to everybody who's on the line. If you've been waiting until the last minute to help out again, this is that time. This is the last minute. We've got to get this done. And we've been outspent before. We've been counted out before. But what's always given me hope and faith and confidence is you. I believe that when the American people come together, we can't be stopped. And that means that when I trip up, you guys have carried me along. Uh, and hopefully there have been times where you know, you, you've looked at what I try to do in the other office and my advocacy on behalf of middle class families, and you've uh, maybe said, you know what, what the President's doing is helping me uh, get through some tough times too. So let's finish what we started. I need you guys to keep fighting all the way till that last ballot is counted. Uh, and Jeremy, I understand that some people have a couple of questions, and I'll, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Let's take our first question from Sharla in Maryland. Sharla, are you there? Thank you. You did a great job last night. <clears throat> you were really awesome. Thanks, Sharla. I would like to know what will the donations this late in the campaign do for us? Well, look, this race is going to be tight. Uh, I mean, I think we had a good night last night, but, you know, Romney had a good night last week, and we always knew that this race was going to tighten. Uh, you know, people forget, even in 2008, when we had the biggest Democratic victory of any president since uh, Lyndon Johnson, the fact is that you know, John McCain got 47% of the vote, and obviously, after four years of, of really slogging through the worst uh, financial crisis since the Great Depression and, and fighting our way back, uh, you know, we know it's going to be close, and it always was going to be close. So with your help, we can still make important decisions right up until Election Day that could affect the outcome and help us win. We can ship much-needed resources to our field offices overnight. If we need to respond to an attack, we can put together an ad and launch it within 24 hours. You'll be supporting volunteers who are in the field knocking on doors and dialing phones to persuade turnout voters. And, and I would expect that this is really going to come down to the wire. We know the other side is not going to be slowing down. They're 
too close for them to hold up tent. And, and that means that we have to fight every inch of the way. And your donation is going to be immediately put to good use to reach out to more voters with our message in, in these last uh, critical days. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think you have time for one more question. So let's go over to Ohio. We have Dominic on the line. Dominic, you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Dominic. Hey, Mr. President, excellent job last night. Thank you, man. Great job, great job. Uh, if my question is, if I can tell my friends one thing they should think about in the election booth, what is it? Well, uh, the first thing is, uh, but to, I've got a couple of daughters, so you know, if they've got kids, think about what kind of country you want your kids to grow up in, go to school in, and raise your own families in. Because on every single issue, jobs, education, health care, environment, equal rights, foreign policy, war, peace, there is a big choice between moving forward and moving back. And, you know, I believe in an America where I don't care where that kid is born, what they look like, they're going to get a, a good education, they're going to be able to go to college so they can compete in the 21st century economy. We're going to be producing jobs in Ohio and here in the United States and not uh, overseas. That we've got a tax code that's fair, that you know, uh, our democracy is not bought and paid for by special interests and lobbyists that everybody's treated fairly and people aren't discriminated against. That when we think about our foreign policy, we make sure that uh, we're being smart and only sending our kids into harm's way when it's absolutely necessary. We've got a plan and they've got uh, the equipment they need, the strategy they need to, to win, and we bring them home when we're done. And you know, to do that, uh, we've got to have a president uh, who's fighting for you. And I, and I think one thing to talk to your friends about is just to say, who do you think is more likely to fight for you in that Oval Office? Who do you, who do you think is more likely when you know, there's, there's a budget deal being cut or decisions are being made about Medicare or Medicaid or, you know, you know a, a decisions being made about uh, how we're going to fund education? Who's the person who's most likely to say, you know what, I know what it's like to be out of a job. I know what it's like to make sure that, uh, you know, kids get uh, help on going to college because I needed help. Who's most likely to uh, think every single day about uh, what it takes to make sure that uh, we've got a strong, private middle class? I think I'm that guy. Uh, I know I'm that guy. That's why I ran in the first place. And, uh, uh, I hope uh, that I persuade your friends. I want you to know that, uh, you know, in Ohio in particular, by the way, you guys all have a early vote. So, Dominic, I hope you've already voted. And anybody else who's on the line who's got early vote, find out from the campaign how to early vote and go ahead and bank those votes. The, the more votes we have in early, uh, the more we guard against bad weather or anything else. And every single vote's going to count. All right? Thank you, guys. I'm proud of you. Let's get this done. Thank you so much, Mr. President. We're proud of you. And um, we've got your back out here. All right, man. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. All right. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on the line tonight. Obviously, it's uh, always a pleasure to, uh, to hear from the president, our leader, um, who's out there fighting for us and, and just made us all proud, as, as Dominic uh, you know, just mentioned, um, and as Charlotte just mentioned, uh, just made us so proud last night. Uh, I know you're all fired up. Um, I know you're ready to go. We won't keep you much longer. Just want to emphasize uh, just one thing that the president said uh, on the call there, and, and uh, that this is uh, funding our field organization. It's how we're going to combat uh, all the massive spending that's going to come in from the super PACs um, and the Romney campaign and others uh, that's about to hit us. And, and that's why tonight's deadline, um, as he mentioned, our very last, our very last FEC deadline of the campaign is so incredibly important. Um, you're going to all be getting an email right after this call. Please open it uh, and click through our website and get what you can. Every little bit, whatever you can, will go a long way, and we will be stewards of that money. Uh, and then while you're there, while you're at BarackObama.com, check out the many other resources that we have there uh, so you can keep the conversation going with your friends, 
family, neighbors, and even strangers. Um, and of course, uh, please make sure that, uh, that you and everyone you know gets out there and votes for the president. If you have early vote um, in your state, all the better. Get out there and get folks uh, voting early. Um, there's no reason to wait. So again, uh, you all are, have been huge supporters of the campaign. Uh, we invited you on the call for what you have done and, and what you will continue to do over the next 20 days. We appreciate you taking the time out of your night. Thanks again for hopping on, and let's go win this thing.